The Brutally Speaking podcast is proudly sponsored by Starving Artist Brewing. Starving Artist Brewing may be a small speck on Michigan's beer map, but they say big things come in small packages. A brewery who really puts their money where their mouth is, supporting underground artists far and wide. Making delicious beers with the simple belief that you should judge beer, not people. Brutally Speaking Podcast is proudly sponsored by Rockabilia.com. With over 500,000 officially licensed items in their online store, you're guaranteed to find something you need. Use our code BRUTALLY and get 10% off your total purchase order. Now on to the show. People say you have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing. This rings true because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard, and you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, and if you're not having fun doing it, What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Brutally Speaking Podcast. I am your host, John. This episode's guest is the returning Jay Gordon of Orgy. This was a fun chat, but holy shit, I have to tell you all about the fucking nightmare week I have had with almost all of my equipment. If you do anything where you rely on technology, then I feel like you're going to really just feel this, this week I've had. So essentially, I went to go record... Uh, another podcast I'm doing with somebody, which, you know, I'll reveal more of that in due time, but they kept going like, Hey, your microphone's kind of fucking up. And I was like, all right. So I fucking undid everything. I played around with my settings and it just still was like, like clipping basically like it cut in and out. Like, and I just didn't know how to solve the problem. So fast forward to, I'm about ready to record the intro and outro I'm doing currently. And now it's making like when I talk, it just makes weird, like, like the, the wave files, when you see yourself talking, when you're recording, they look a certain way. I think we all kind of know what they look like. When I was recording, this shit looked like fucking squares. It looked like some shit from like Aqua Teen Hunger Force with the, <laughs> with the, uh, oh, and I can't remember their names. Um, but basically they were two dimensional characters. Uh, that's what the shit looked like. And it sounded equally, uh, as fucked up. Like where it was just like, like it sounded like dial up internet. And it was just one of those things where I'm like, okay, what the fuck's wrong? And so try Googling if you never have. Try Googling. My audio makes bleeps, bloops, whatever fucking word you can come up with to describe the noise. Good luck, because all you're going to come up with is how to get hissing and how to get all this shit out of your audio, which is not what <laughs> I wouldn't even call what I had audio. And so it just became this thing where I'm like trying to troubleshoot everything from like, is it my interface? Is it my microphone? Is it my computer? Is it a bad cable? Like, I didn't know where the problem started. So I'm trying to troubleshoot. I'm going from my, my home computer that I always record everything on to, to then going to my laptop and trying to figure out like, like piece by piece, like, what is it? What's the issue? Then he was doing it on my laptop. So now I'm like, fuck, like, is it, it's gotta be something in my equipment. So then I'm going through like piece by piece, like, okay, like, let's try a different microphone. Nope. Still doing that. Okay. Let's try different cables. Still doing that. Let's try the interface. Still doing that. So I couldn't really identify where the problem was. Hit up a friend who had the exact same interface as I did, seeing if he's run into this issue. And he's like, I haven't used that thing in like two years. You can come grab mine. If it works, keep it. So I go to grab his long story short, bring it in, do the same thing, same problem. And I'm like, fuck. So then I'm like, okay, so now I need to buy a new interface. So I go to a, uh, I called up Sweetwater. I'm like, hey, I need this shit like immediately because like as I'm when I'm recording this, I'm doing three podcasts today. So I was like, I need this by Monday. Apparently I'd missed the window by 35 minutes to get it next day to my house. And I was like, fuck. So then Grant over at Sweetwater, fucking awesome dude. The few times I've had to interact with him, super great. Always tries to go above and beyond to make sure that their customers are taken care of, which I can totally understand why everyone loves Sweetwater. I do as well. But it was one of those things where he was like, I think we can get it there. And I'm like, I I don't need, I can't deal with uncertainties. Like I need to know that I'm going to have this at this time. Like I can't reschedule this, this podcast I'm doing, uh, who, who will eventually be my 400th guest. Like that is the episode. So like I need it to happen. And he's like, yeah, man, I just, I can't confirm that that will happen. So I'm like, all right, man, I'm going to cancel this order. I'm just going to go to Guitar Center. I'm going to give them my money because at least I know I can have the the product in my hand 
and troubleshoot from there. So I go, I get the focus right, I get the uh, little scarlet thing, and it's what I'm using right now, and it works uh, on my laptop, still on my on my home computer, like it's not working, and I'm like, okay, like I'll deal with that problem later. Then I basically start like the three days at work of like 10 hour days open to close doubles. And I'm like, man, I just have no time to troubleshoot this shit. And so unfortunately, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get the podcast out this week. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the things recorded and get it done in a timely manner. So fast forward, I wake up yesterday, it's Monday morning as of when I'm recording this, I wake up Sunday, I turn on my computer, and I plug everything in. And magically now everything fucking works everything i then went back to my interface now magically that works i use it on the the stream yard where i record all of my like podcasts works just fine there go to my laptop everything works just fine and i'm like what the fuck happened what happened from when i went to bed saturday night to waking up saturday sunday morning and then just being like nah bro we're good we got it like, I didn't fucking update anything. The only thing I did was actually uninstall GarageBand, which is what I typically use, and reinstall it, and I still had the same fucking problem. I, I have no idea what happened. And the funny thing is, is, like, my friends and I, like, that are somewhat more tech-savvy than me, they're like, oh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's your sound drive on your computer. Like, it's just fucked, because, like, you use it more than most people probably push it a lot more. It, it Sometimes these things just go. Or it could be in your interface. It could have been the, the conversion thing, like your, uh, I forget what they, my friend called it, but basically the thing that converts the audio from, you know, the audio it is to USB to go digital and all that kind of stuff. He's like, sometimes that just goes. And I was like, fine. But it's funny that, like, everything now magically works. After the most stressful of fucking, like, four days, five days that I've had doing podcast show, I'm like, w- I don't know how to troubleshoot anything any better. It has been fucking insane to then just have everything work and i didn't do anything to make it work like i would love to say oh well i just rebooted my whole system or i like no nothing nothing i did beyond what i had already done when it didn't work should have worked and it just was fucking infuriating so that's been my week i'm excited as shit to start this week off right um I'll tell you a little bit more about this week. Let's get into my chat with Jay Gordon, and I'll talk to you on the other side of it. kind of interesting you know the last uh handful of guests i've had on are people that i've had on a few years ago and haven't really spoken to since and it's kind of been fun kind of catching up and just kind of seeing what's been going on because i feel like aside from the obvious like we all endured a pandemic collectively together and and a shared experience which i don't think has globally happened really since maybe the depression uh if i'm being kind of generous (laughs) with horrible things that we've all gone through collectively um it's just kind of interesting <laughs> yeah. to catch up and, and kind of see, you know, what we've what we've all learned about ourselves and, and gone through. And I feel like, you know, you guys were, you know, last time I talked, you know, you had an EP out, you guys were touring, and it seemed like you guys were really building up some momentum, and it kind of just sucked to, from a peripheral standpoint of seeing you guys like kind of making all this momentum, and then it just kind of got shot in the ass. Um, yeah. But you're back and yeah. got new music and the sick new world fest is coming up in a couple months. Like seems like the momentum is kind of building back up for you all. So uh, what is, uh, what has the last few years been like for you? Uh, pretty crazy, you know, like I'm sure like, you know, like just like everyone else, but, uh, you know, um, the kids are crazy and, uh, you know, COVID <laughs> is pretty crazy. So, uh, you know, it's all good though. Uh, just, doing music and uh making records happen and stuff like that and got a new single out and you know just the use i guess as i say speaking to your kids you know it was kind of interesting to to see the dad side of you come out on your your instagrams and so forth uh in the last little bit you know (laughs) your son getting into skateboarding which was awesome to see but i'm sure is nerve-wracking as shit to have a child be involved in something that could just you know, one, one misstep or, you know, something going on. Yeah. It's, it's a severe injury. 
Yeah. I mean, I, you know, he's kind of tapered off with that. Uh, I think maybe he's, he realizes he was mortal, you know, <laughs> you know, <what> I mean? <laughs> so, um, so he's like, you know, uh, plus he, he's as tall as me now, which is crazy, you know? Mm. And, uh, I just think he wants, he wants to move towards other things. So, you know, I don't push him one way or the other. He's doing music now too. And I just, I'm just like, yeah, you know, it's all good. I mean, so, with both of your kids kind of getting into something creative, you know, the other day we were supposed to do this and your daughter was filming a movie, I believe you had said, and it just feels yeah. like, you know, I was kind of thinking about that, like how it must be for you to have grown up and, and wanting to pursue, you know, arts and, and music and all these creative endeavors. And now your kids are kind of finding themselves as they're growing up in their own creative endeavors. Is it something is it kind of hard to let them pursue something that may be very fulfilling, but also could be really crushing at the same time? Or is it just kind of um, great yeah, to see them become themselves? Know, I think uh, they're both pretty uh, strong-minded individuals. They're definitely their own people, you know? And so, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I give them as much guidance as, as needed, you know, um, but they need to find out stuff on their own kind of, I mean, you know, they've, they've all been on castings and, you know, book jobs and not book jobs and like things like that. So, um, you know, they, they, they have to learn how life works, you know? So I, I mean, I'm a pretty firm believer in that. You know what I mean? I'm not like cool about it, but like, you know, <laughs> I just want them to, uh, yeah, they, they have to, you know, they have to, you know, they've had their fair share of ups and downs just like everyone else, you know? So, yeah, I just always so I, 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 I let them do what they want to do. I was gonna say I find it interesting. You know, I had talked to uh, Jason Boyd from Audio Event, Brandon's brother, and it was interesting, kind of, you know, hearing how his family growing up. It was like his parents were really supportive of each of them starting bands, booking shows, and all that, and then you know starting to play out at such a young age and. It was kind of funny because yeah. I received some shit from a, a commenter on YouTube that was like, how dare you, you know, talk about parenting and, you know, their parents are super nice. And so what if they weren't the norm? And I was like, no, you're missing the point, which is a lot of parents, I don't think, actually let their kids go go explore these things because they are so protective. And, and you know, I know I, that's kind of how I grew up. It was a lot of, you know, you can't really go far away to go see shows because of the un unknown variables and so forth. And to have parents who are kind of more willing to let their kids explore and, and kind of find themselves in the world, I think is, is awesome, but it's not, yeah. it's not what I knew. And it's not how a lot it's of not practical. It's not, it's not typical or practical. I, I get that. But you know, yeah. the same, I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's a fine line there. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you, you know, if you, turn them into like you know i don't know you protect them overly overly protect them the minute they you know get a get a, a break for five minutes they're like putting acid in their eyes or something <laughs> crazy like that you know i mean you know I, i'm just saying that like uh you can't be too overly protective you know what i mean like you know you get you, you have to raise a badass kid these days and i don't mean badass in like a like a like a negative way i mean just you know you gotta they, they gotta have tools to um protect themselves and you know i mean this is a crazy world that we live in so you gotta you know you gotta raise them with the with the tools the proper tools you know what i mean you can't be you can't have no like you know just like <clears throat> a lot, every one of those parents that does what you're what you're saying you know like like regrets it later because they, they realize they were overly protected and the kid gets outside and they're just like what do i do like you know <laughs> i think that's foolish you know what i mean it's like you know yeah you, you, you can't you can't you can't hide them from everything you know what i mean you cannot do that because it just doesn't work out you know unless unless you're you know unless you want to raise them in a bubble <laughs> you know, yeah that that doesn't really work either i think we've seen from the various movies about such things yeah yeah you know kind of speaking to to children and, and kind of getting older you know, it's it's interesting kind of seeing, you know, when I saw that Sick New World Festival get announced and it's like it's it's definitely catering to the people of my demo, like my age, maybe a little bit older, you know, the 40s to, yeah. to 50s now and so forth. The people have money to go to such a thing, but kind of looking at some of the newer bands that are kind of involved and probably the fact that people my age are bringing their kids probably to like your shows. Is it interesting to think that now you're a multi-generational act? Uh, it doesn't bother me. I mean, it's just whatever. I mean, I, I think everybody wants to be that at some point. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you you want to have the longevity to be able to do stuff like that, and we definitely have that. 
you know. But you gotta, you know, you gotta stay. You gotta stay with the times. Yeah, maybe you're gonna bring your kids to see me. They're gonna have fun. They're probably gonna have more fun than you. <laughs> you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know. So you gotta, you gotta just, you know, you can't, you can't sleep for a minute when it comes to uh, music, especially because it changes a lot. I mean, it usually changes into some terrible shit. But like, you know, you, there's, there's good, they're good and bad with everything. So you gotta, you know, take a little of this and take a little of that and just keep. Keep riding with it, you know what I mean? Got a sleigh, bro. Is that something, you know, and I was trying to remember from our last conversation, I know we had kind of talked about, you know, the evolution of what was considered new metal, because new metal, to me, when I really looked at it, it was just this expansive sound. It wasn't really any one thing. It was kind of everything. It was anything from industrial to to kind of hip-hop based and, and everything in between. Excuse me. Right. And it was this thing Hence now where right. <laughs> but it was this thing now when when kind of you're seeing the quote unquote resurgence of it but it's not really again it's not really any one thing it's kind of an amalgamation of everything but i think i had said when talking about the last ep you had put out about how it feels it feels like what you've done but it feels new and it feels no pun intended new but it feels you know New exciting metal. and refreshing no, like, yeah, no, and, yeah. No. and it but was just this know, thing I, where I, I appreciate that i appreciate that yeah thanks but i was gonna say i feel like it's it's a thing where even with the new single empty that it, it's like i don't feel like the band you specifically were ever really one thing like you had a lot of different elements that you were bringing through and it's kind of funny when i know i had you on before a lot of people were like oh what have they been up to and it's like they've been making music. Yeah. And when I would talk about like a song like Toxic, that it was a thing where I was like, this is probably one of the most catchiest orgy songs, in my opinion. It's so fucking well written. And the fact that the band's able to put out music that I still identify as being very good music and, and indicative of what you were doing and what made me fall in love with the band, it's kind of a shame to me that I don't feel like a lot of people have followed with you up until recently when all of a sudden it's the the new catch thing like oh I, I it's cool to like new metal it's cool to like orgy and, and you know cold chamber yeah, and a lot yeah. of these old bands and it's got to be weird now too because i know we talked about that where i was like is it weird that it was a dirty thing or it was cool and then it's dirty and and maybe it seems like it's on the upswing to where now officially i think 100 percent it's safe to say it is is it weird to kind of have traverse to where like now you're back in in fashion so to, so to speak yeah, definitely. Like, it's just, the, it's, you know, I mean, you know, I'm not complaining about it. So, you know, I'm happy to be doing stuff like Sick New World and all that kind of stuff. Um, just happy to be there. It doesn't really matter the time slot you're on or any of that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to cry because I, you know, had, you know, last on, you know, total TRL, like, you know, longer than anybody else or, you know, I, all that kind of stuff doesn't really matter. You know, I, I catch it from all sides. Like, you know what I mean? It's just so weird. It's like, you know, how do you feel about being like that low on the bill? I'm just like, bro, I'm stoked to be there. I think it's going to be a good show. And, and there's three rotating stages. So it's going to be like, boom, 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 you know, and then the whole thing will be done, you know? So it's a good thing. It's a, it's, it's a good positive thing. And, and I'm cool. I'm cool with whatever, you know, like uh, it's always that like, you know, 10, 20 year turnaround just happens, you know, like people start getting into that again and, you know, it's better than being a flash in the pan. I'll tell you that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I'm, but I'm, I'm cool with it. You know, I'm really, I'm really stoked about it. You know, in light of, you know, the big thing was the one we were young fest and this, this basically kind of piggyback off of the heels of that. And there was a lot of, there were a lot of bands that when the, when we were young festival was announced that were like, yo, we didn't agree to this. Like it was just kind of like oh. sort of that, like not wishful thinking, but like just kind of like a fire fest thing where if we just throw enough bands out there and we kind of contact <laughs> them after the fact that like people be like, well, fuck yeah, I guess I want to be involved in this. Was there sort of a similar yeah, we, story we probably, about we this when they were involved in that? Yeah. But was there sort of a similar story yeah. in this, like where this was kind of no. maybe they were using different bands to kind of entice other bands to come out and play? No, 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 not at all. I mean, we booked this, this, uh, we were booked on this show. Uh, like I, I, we may have been one of the, you know, the early bands being booked cause we've been booked on this for over a year and a half maybe. And we just couldn't talk about it. 
you know. Uh, I knew we were doing a festival in Vegas. I just didn't know what it was going to be called or anything like that. And um, uh, and then, you know, obviously that festival came through. And um, I, I think that, you know, I, I thought that, like, it, there was just going to be, like, a, just a, you know, uprising of all these festivals and stuff like that. And I guess there really kind of is. But I didn't realize that uh, a lot of those bands on the first thing that they did, uh, the, the other, what was it called? Um, when We Were Young you Fest. Yeah, when we were young, yeah. So, um, so a lot of people wanted to go to that. I wanted to go to that. I was just super busy, you know, and I, I really couldn't get away. But, uh, um, yeah, this is is, is a show like that. But I think that all the bands are pretty much booked. What I did hear was that there are some bands that haven't even been listed yet. Oh, so you may see the whole lineup the way, except for you know what's ever ever at the top. You know, obviously System Corn, you know, uh, Deftones, Incubus, all them, you know. Um, are going to probably maintain their positions, but I think there's some other bigger bands, big bands coming uh, that, that that are to be announced. And I don't want to be the guy that says the wrong <laughs> one. But, you know, I've just heard some things, you know. I, I mean, I know that there's like five or six bands that haven't been uh, even mentioned on the on the thing yet. I thought Limp Bizkit would have been on this one for sure. That is the thing everyone's been saying that they were like, how do you have, especially like the bigger bands that are on here, like how do you have some of those bands at the top of the flyer yeah. and you don't have Limp Bizkit when they've kind of reestablished themselves, especially here in the States as kind of a, a oh, de facto yeah. like headliner. Yeah, they're kind of a big deal. You know what I mean? Like, and, and they were a big deal back then too. So it's like, I, I think they've always been a big deal. I mean, they've always played the festivals and all the big shows and, Things like that. I mean, they they kill it live. They've always been super good, you know. So I was a little bummed that they weren't um, mentioned on uh, that. But maybe maybe that's one of the bands that they're talking about adding. Who knows? You know. I mean, I haven't heard that, but I I've heard I've heard of some other bands that, that they're thinking about adding, and uh, I have not confirmed with any of them yet. So I definitely don't want to say. I don't know if those bands will confirm or not. So you have to wait kind on that one. <laughs> but yeah, there will be, be more announcements. So. I was going to say, kind of looking at this, you know, with a lot of more, I would say, kind of industrial leaning type stuff, you know, with She Wants Revenge, Ministry, Skinny Puppy, and, you know, kind of that stuff, like KMFDM, obviously, too. It's, yeah. I feel like this is going to be one of those where I see a festival like this and I just feel like, what's the collaboration that's going to come out of this? Like, who's going to, like, maybe link up and haven't seen each other in a while and then go, like, you know, we should do, we should do a fucking song together. Like, is that because yeah. i feel like that i feel like that's what these festivals kind of are is you get to be a fan of being a fan of the music in the mm. industry and then subsequently you kind of start talking and finding out someone else is a fan and then you're like i was a fan too like we should we should do something yeah you know you know it's really funny um you know i kind of want to do that with uh motionless like and you know we have some s similar friends and we, uh, so I, you know um I've, I've, I've worked on music production with uh, people that have worked on some of their stuff. And, uh, you know, we've mentioned stuff in passing. Maybe, maybe that could be something fun like that. Maybe, maybe they could be one of the bands that they had on that. That'd be great. Or like bring me the horizon. I'd love to do something with those guys. I really like their music a lot, but you know, um, in that respect, I don't really know um, who's going to be doing any other collaborations, but um, uh, I did a song with, Chino and Abe from the Deftones and um, uh, call the song called Sore that um, that I never even made a bounce of the song like you know it was never really finished but uh, we talked about finishing that I would love to do that I would love to finish the song it's so good and it's so Deftones too you know so we just did it like a hundred years ago and uh, I was like you know we should come back and revisit that you know so we'll see you're reminding me of the the era of like LimeWire and so forth, where it wasn't necessarily the the cliche gimmick of like you say you're this band and then you just upload your own tracks and people are like bummed because they thought they were getting the album that they wanted. But it was uh, more of the I would always be the person who was looking for like the collabs that I didn't know existed. Like you know, you would see the one where it's like it's incubus orgy you know members of rammstein basically all of like the family values tour like together doing someone else's song that you hadn't heard and you're like well i need to hear that yeah. and then it was never that yeah. song 
but I was always like, I'm sure there's shit like that that fucking happens because like, how could it not? Like, yeah, just- that, that 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 was a weird thing about Lemire, huh? Like, you never know what you're getting. You're like, whoa, virus or no, you know, <laughs> no, but like, you never know what you're getting in in, in uh, you know the download. It was always like, you know, it's kind of kind of interesting too. They should just, you know. I think we should start a new service like that where you just, it's just like potluck, just, you know, you know, you pay like whatever and then you get like crazy download, like you get crazy uh, collabs and, and remixes and stuff that like, you know, that'd be, that'd be awesome. I think I'm going to do that. You heard it here first. Exclusive. There it is. Well, I mean, cause I feel like that was the thing that sadly, I feel like, it, you know, I've talked about this quite a bit, like in rock and metal, I don't feel like there's as much collaborative nature in and what, you know, working together, you know, I think kind of that era of coming up in the late nineties, early two thousands, you know, it's like Chino being on uh bender with uh seven dust and, you know, Max from Cap- uh, Soulfly um, coming on and doing a track with, you know, head up with Deftones and so on and so forth. It's like, yeah. you know, you saw some collaborations happening, but not like you see in pop and mm-hmm. hip hop. And it's like, I feel like those two genres are more apt to, especially in the digital, you know, singles world where they will work together to kind of increase their, their visibility of not only their scene, but of themselves. And I don't, I just don't see it happening much in rock and metal. And I don't know if it's because the artists aren't willing to, or if it's more of a behind the scenes red tape thing that just prevents these things from happening. I mean, I mean, you know, COVID probably played a big part in the decline of a lot of that. You know what I mean? Uh, right. You know, the, that 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 couple years there, like you know, people weren't didn't even want to see each other. You know what I mean? Like it's like, I mean, you know, I would get together with my guitar player and we would do stuff and you know, stay across the room from each other. And then at first we're like, dude, this is so <laughs> stupid. Like, you know what I mean? And then we realized that we weren't going to give each other anything. So you know, it's you know, it's not like we're making it out in there. We're just playing some music. You know. So I don't know. So uh, maybe that has a lot to do with why there was like a decline of uh, collaborations and whatnot, but it's not like people don't talk about it. I think people just talk about a lot of stuff and then they realize they have kids and stuff like me. And I'm just like too busy, you know, but I'm, I'm down to do some stuff. I, I would love to finish that song. Like I said, and, um, you know, I would love to see more of that stuff myself. I think that, uh, that, that, that is, is, you know, sorely missed. When you kind of look back to, because I feel like, you know, I think we even said this in our last conversation, like you're someone that just wants to make music and wants to collaborate and wants to just do the thing that you love doing. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like maybe it's just getting hard because I feel like a lot of people, and I think maybe what you said is it, I think a lot of people just talk about doing something and have no follow through. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm one of those people sometimes, so I totally get it. <laughs> you know, I mean, Are you, I, you know, not intentional. No, no, it's just it's it's not even an intentional thing. It's just like you know, like I said, you just get busy. When you got kids; they take precedence over everything as they should, and that's that. You know what I mean? So it's just like I wish I could do this today, but I'm not gonna do that because my daughter has to do this or you know something like that. So you know, but yeah, it, it's. Uh, a lot of people say that they're going to do something and they just never do it. You know, it's like, don't be phony. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel, was that a hard thing to, to maybe, I don't want to say reconcile with, cause I feel like that kind of puts it in a negative light, but was that a hard balancing act for you to try to shift? Like music is the thing that is my, my hundred percent, my all, my everything to, I kind of have to be more of the family person now and music's sort of on the back burner because well, that's well, the it is. Like, thing you know, it's, Yeah, I mean, it still is, you know what I mean? I mean, I'm still totally, like, you know, optimistic, enthusiastic about, you know, d- driven, all those kind of things, but uh, you just have to balance it, you know what I mean? Like, my kids love music, too, so they're not going to, like, trip on me if I have to do some stuff, you know? It's just that, you know, they require a lot of attention, so you just got to... You know, as as your as a parent, you know, you make the decision to be a parent, then you gotta you gotta follow through with that shit. You know, so you know, I, I do both, and I, I try to balance it as good as possible. Yeah, you know, doing the best you can. You know, that's it. You said your your son was now getting into music. How has it been to see him kind of become him, maybe coming into his own as a, as an artist or a musician himself? And what is uh, what has it been like stuff? to kind of work together? <laughs> he's definitely coming into his own on that stuff. Like, I mean, he's, 
um, he, I can't even explain the kind of music he does. It's kind of like, you know, they call it like glitch pop or glitch hop or whatever the heck it is. But it's like, it's like a new kind of version of that, you know, um, it's really a weird genre and, you know, I don't, don't really understand it, but like, he's finally getting into where, <laughs> um you know where like he's making his own beats instead of just like whatever beats he can just scramble on just to you know get, just get something off and now he's doing like the beats himself and stuff and i notice all that stuff sounds immensely better than you know some of the stuff that he used he was down and those beats were good so so now um he's learning how to do the whole package and i and i really like that about him kind of reminds me of his dad but you know but no you know, I'm, I'm proud of him and uh i just you know i just stay out of his way and, and let him do that. Like I, I don't want to. I don't want to be like. You know, it's funny because it, it's it, it's funny how this whole like cycle goes. Because like you know, uh, I, like I've made like some leather jackets and some pants and stuff like that. You know, back in the day, and um, uh, me and this guy Marcelo, and uh, I tried to give him to Jax when he was really getting into clothing and stuff like that too. And he was just like, oh, this shit sucks, bro. Like I don't like this shit." And I'm like, <laughs> literally literally now when he when he when he sees it now i mean literally like i, I mean maybe six months ago i tried to you know like like what about these jeans you like these and he's just like no i'm not into it you know and then you know you know you know time warp to here and it's like he's like why didn't you give me these like these are dope as fuck like blah blah blah, blah you know and i'm just like okay so yeah t you know they just change a lot everything changes so fast and uh they, you know, he's coming to into his own, doing his own thing. And if he wants any influences from his dad, he knows where to go to get that. So he'll, he'll ask me questions about like, you know, how do you get your vocals to sound like this? Or how do you do that? Or he'll, he'll play me one of my old songs that I just totally forgot about. And I'll be like, Oh fuck, that's, that is my song that, you know, like, um, something off of punk static paranoia. He was just like, you know, that song is shame. He's like, dude, it's so me fire he's like i love it he's he, he's like can you make me a beat like that <laughs> so, yeah sure like you know so that's kind of weird i'm like i'm on, how are you going to mix that in with what you do with your other stuff like it just doesn't sound you know because it's more like rappy and you know like like just like quick melodies and stuff like that and a lot of video game sounds and stuff and you know you've, you've heard some of that stuff maybe i don't know yeah yeah no i have i mean yeah. it's it's funny because like we were uh, at the place I work at, I was in the kitchen and we were talking about a bunch of different stuff while they were playing music. And I was kind of making the comment. I was like, you know, some of this stuff that like is kind of sample heavy uses a lot of other people's like takes this melody with like this beat or this, whatever. Like I was like, you know, a perfect example is like a, a group like girl talk where it's like, all it is is just samples of everyone else's stuff. And they find different ways yeah. to, to marry it together. And I was like, in, yeah. in the litigious world that we live in, how the fuck does this exist? Like, I'm sure it's just bootlegged <laughs> as fuck. Like, they, they're not on a label. They just, like, no one knows who's doing it technically. But, like, I go, I know they tour. So it's like, yeah. in theory, it's like, how do you get away with this? And Unless all the artists are just like, you know what? This is so fucking cool. Like, I don't care. And I go, the only person I can think yeah. of recently that had a similar story was on Drake's and nothing was the same album, which I've been listening to a lot of lately. There's a song they have on there called a uh, pound cake. And, and then another Wu Tang reference sample they used. And apparently RZA just gave Drake the beat gratis. Like it was like, you know what? This is what Wu Tang was all about. Like, just fuck it. Give it to him. Like we don't want any money for it. Yeah. But then it's me. I can, start see, thinking, I can I would, see those guys being like that. Yeah. yeah and i mean that was sort of the thing but i was like so then i wonder from there because i know that beat's been used by about eight or nine other artists does it yeah. still fall under a gratis thing or is it only gratis for that person and then i was like you know i'm too involved you know, and interested in the behind the scenes shit when like i'm asking questions like that yeah i mean i mean bro's got to care a little bit more than that like you know what i mean it's like <laughs> it's like like the woo needs to keep getting paid you know what i mean i'm sure those guys want to get paid still you know and and i mean i can't see them giving a freebie to drake like you know it's like bro he's got enough money i mean go get yours bro like you know what i mean like collab i i, I feel you but like yeah no you got to get yours like i i I imagine if anybody else sampled that song, I mean, they're probably going to get a knock at the door, you know, or a phone call from a lawyer <laughs> at some point saying like the killer bees need to get paid, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know, but like, uh, you know, oddly enough um, that, you, that you talk about that, basically, you know, the Rihanna shut up in your drive song. Yeah. That song was 
apparently um, and uh, as sampled out of a certain Blue Monday song that some band covered, and they actually used our version of that song of, of uh, on that Blue song. Monday. So I, I, you know, it's weird, really weird to me. But yeah. Well, then that actually brings up an interesting question to me, to yeah. you. So I know, like Old Town Road by Little Nas X. Well, for those that may not know the story, and I and I don't want to assume you know the whole story, so I'll just kind of quickly give the story that. So that song existed the way it did. It was a country hit. Then country music gatekeepers were like, "It's not a country song." And then so Billy Ray Cyrus came on and kind of gave it the credibility to be in the country space, while also being a crossover song. Apparently, whoever say, it's it's cool, guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. apparently, it sampled a Nine Inch Nails part i don't remember from what song but when it won a grammy i think like either a country grammy or whatever trent Reznor got a grammy because of the sample that it was used in it and he was just like yeah i guess our people got asked if we could clear it or whatever and i just said sure whatever it's not a big deal but like it's interesting how sometimes these these samples come through or more to the effect that some people probably do it and then aren't even aware that like like probably hope that they're not going to get caught or not going to, no one's going to notice the little bit that they used of a song. Yeah. So was that something that you guys had to clear for Rihanna's people to use or was it just used? No. Um, Well, see it's, even though it's our version, I mean, it good question, especially on this. And I don't really know where, where we would um, fall into place with this whole thing. I mean, granted that, that new order did that song first, right? We just did a cover of their song. But there was never that heavy chorus part in there, and that's the part they used. So I am a little bit, you know, curious as to, um, you know, how does that, how does that work? You know what I mean? Like there, there, that that could be a whole revision of some laws right there, as far as I'm concerned. You know what I mean? Like I, I would I would love to at least you know inquire about that just to find out if like did we just lose out on a shit ton of money or is it like can we can we make this better for bands in the future or whatever you know like it's you know what i mean like i think if you change a song enough that you should maybe get a little bit of a um especially if somebody samples it after that like it's like bro like that's that's you know that's a re 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 dub with a redo <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i don't know well, there there might be some considerations i don't know that people could take for other people i you know i'm just saying if uh if looking into it would, would, would fix some things. There's, there's some things like that that should be fixed uh, on a lot of levels. And I just can't think of it off the top of my head, but there's a lot of things that I know like that happened. And, you know, I, and everybody does, I mean, you should have a clue as far as like, you know, if you're going to plagiarize someone's shit and you're going to like straight, you know, gank somebody's music like that or whatever, you should at least clear it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like um, now, and one thing that I will say to, you know, your listeners or whatever is uh, you can't copyright an actual drum beat. So if there's no music and it's a drum beat of any kind, you cannot copyright. I don't care if it's Led Zeppelin or if it's like the Beatles or anything. If you just have like dry drum tracks that you you could put, you, anybody could use that. My mom, you know, like anybody, like my mom decided she wanted to record. She happened to have a, you know, two track of like, you know, whoever John Bonham's drum loops or something, she could actually use that without any um, having to compensate anything. Cause you cannot copyright a drum beat. Think about it. It's like, it's like there's so many beats that are so similar, like, you know, pop beats, right. and, you know, whatever. So, you know, um, so you can't copyright that, but yeah, you should, you should at least inquire and get a license. And uh, I'll tell you one, th- one place that this happened, it happened on um, uh, Opticon. The, the mm. song that we did, Opticon. There's a little bit of a, a Billy Squire like uh, drum beat, most sampled just dude a ever. little bit of it. Huh? He is the, the most the sampled what? artist ever. Uh, Billy Squire is one is of the most really? sampled artists in hip hop. Yep. Wow, that's crazy. No one ever uses that though. It's, it's funny that that particular song. Uh, you know, the, the, the stro- uh, stroke, stroke me, whatever. Yep. Fuck. It's called yeah. Stroke, I think. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, it's just a, a little piece of that. That boom, sh- boom is is in the octagon. So uh, the the part that we could get away with, you know. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, it's interesting th- this whole thing of you know, kind of the Rihanna using your version of Blue Monday, 
because I was actually watching and granted this is TV, not route rooted in technical reality, but it did make me think because they were suing someone who was under a contract to, for a label. And it happened to be played by Matthew Lillard in the show, uh, the good wife. And they were like, well, he used this song and he was under contract still. So it's, it's our thing. But then they then tried suing him for taking, cause there was a cover song he did and they were like, well, it's a cover song. And even though the guy gave him oh, the gratis to like cover the song, then they were like, well, now he owes him money for, for the chorus or whatever. And they were trying to differentiate actual original chorus and melodies and so forth, even though lyrically it's the same foundationally, musically, it's all totally different. So it was interesting to kind of think about things from that perspective. However, the example yeah. I was going to bring up was, um, Paramore had that got, or at least Haley Williams and somebody, the other person that wrote the song got credit on ah, fuck. What is, and I don't remember the song title. Uh, it was a new pop hit that just came out and everyone was like, Oh, this sounds like Paramore. And so I guess enough people had mentioned that it sounded like this Paramore song that now Haley Williams and the other person that wrote the song have songwriting credit on this new song because it sounded enough like their their song. Actually, I'm going to look that up because I hate not knowing the thing I'm talking about. Uh... <laughs> um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's that's cool. Maybe they. Oh, uh... It was on uh, Olivia Rodrigo's "Good for You" um, that apparently they said that that oh, yeah. sounded enough like. Uh, one of the other one of their songs uh yeah who owns the team yeah whatever. And and it was say, okay, where they, got me. yep so they they gave her they gave uh Haley williams and the other person songwriting credit on good for you so now that probably just netted them a show or they just do it i think they just i remember when the story came out i know people on tiktok or something were like hey this chorus sounds really familiar and then would cut in yeah. the other song so i think if they were smart, the the label and the the managers and all that probably were like, "Hey, let's go to them and try to settle this before it goes to a court and we lose like all the songwriting credits and all that kind of stuff." Um, but yeah. I honestly think, in light of that, maybe you would have a, a precedence that's already been set for you to be like, "Well, somebody else recently just found a very similar thing," and and like I said. Yes, it's a cover of a cover. However, we own the IP or however you want to address that, the royalties, or that's our melody, that's our thing that we did, which is the version yeah. you use because you could have used the other thing. So I, I do kind right. of feel like maybe it would be it'd be interesting to look into it and be like, where where do we stand and what could we what kind of amicable agreement did, could we come to with this? Did you did you say that that was a show that you were watching or something like that? Yeah, it was TV called show. The Good Wife. It's uh it's about a show oh, yeah. of the woman who's yeah, I've, has uh, the dude from yeah. uh Sex and the City and uh some yeah. other people. A lot of a lot of famous people in it actually. Michael J. Fox is in it quite a bit. Um, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen parts of it, yeah. But yeah, that was it was like a one an episode that like perked my interest because I was like, ooh, music and rap and being a cover because yeah. it reminded me of like when Dynamite Hack did the cover of Boys in the Hood by uh Easy E for that take a bite out yeah. of rhyme compilation. And I was like, I wonder if they you know, you like the same thing kind of could kind of do something like that, where it's like, does yeah. this not fall under a parody law or whatever, because it technically it's new melodies, it's new, everything else. And only the lyrics are the same, which if the person gave them, yeah. you know, the okay, then they're good. They're in the clear. Yeah. I find all these yeah. things interesting. I know a lot of people probably do not, but yeah. to me, it's infinitely it, uh, interesting. It, it, it's, it's very interesting. It, it, it's something that should be, uh, you know, talked about too, because, um, you know, as it is, artists aren't getting paid like original artists, you know, artists in general, whatever you want to call it, uh, aren't really getting paid like they should. They, you know, the artists always get screwed, but I guess that's why they call you an artist, right? And then maybe like, <laughs> oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Like, you know, thanks guys, I'm dead, but like, cool, right on. Um, no, it's, it's, so, so it's like, uh, yeah, artists don't get paid enough um, just as it is. And, and people are really, it's starting to get like, um, you, okay, so like uh, in China, they don't have copyright laws and they don't have really like, license. Yeah, no, they do not. Like you can be Gucci part Gucci five. Like, you know, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Like you can, you can, you can, you can blatantly just tap into someone's shit in China and it just doesn't matter. And that they're, they're just like tough shit that I, and that sucks you know what i mean because like wow you're just gonna plagiarize and just rip me off in this you know my idea and then you're just gonna bounce <laughs> you know make all this money thanks you know it's it's a 
it's it's a give and take thing here in the states, and they're trying to make it like really they're trying to make the music industry. Uh, for a while, they were um, really trying to take your your you know your integrity and your and your you know like your mechanicals like a like a way you know somehow and it's like well you know, those 360 deals is that kind of what you're referencing no just like you know just do do whatever you want kind of thing like sample whatever you want just replay whatever you want we'll just use it like you know and just let the chips fall where they may and you, and you, you really can't you can you can't do that like if you want to get sued in the fucking face but like you know <laughs> at the same time some people some people might not know or find out till way later and it's like you know oh we'll just pay him later and some people are like that and it's cool it works out you know but um, like uh, a friend of mine actually wrote part of a Gwen Stefani song. Like a, um, <laughs> it, it, basically, they just kind of, they kind of they really jacked it, you know. And it, it, it sucks because um, she knew him. She used to, uh, they used to, uh, somebody used to do somebody's hair. I don't know back in New, like the Orange County, and um, he did that. Who got my lighter? Start the fire song. You know who got my lighter? Stuff the fire, okay. yeah. and she she used to write a blog in a Orange County magazine, and she was she the, he had the clip of her saying that oh I love that song that you guys did, and we're talking like somebody who you know he was you know in the uh, first corn uh, you know setup, and uh, his name I I shouldn't say that you know probably get sued for that, um, but anyway <laughs> so she wrote, she. Wrote, she wrote a blog about his uh, song, you know, and she was just like, oh, I love that song so much, you know, and it's so dope. And um, uh, so basically, uh, then, then he had some videos of him, you know, doing the song, you know, way back in the day, like, you know, God, it was like 100 years ago. And then uh, and then her and Pharrell came up with this song that was like, who got my lighter, start the fire. And he, 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 he actually went to the to the lawsuit and somehow did mm-hmm. not get it to happen. And that just makes no fucking sense to me whatsoever. Like he he's really owed that money. Like you know what I mean? Like pay a bitch. Like you know what I mean? Like I'm sorry. Like I, I got his back on that one because I think it's like uh, that was fucked up. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like uh, clearly clearly he had this song already, even though it was a metal band doing it. You know, lyrically speaking and everything else, it's like you can say it similar to the way he said it. So it's like come on, man. But yeah, he got fucked on that one. Maybe they'll open that back up. But uh, yeah, some people get screwed on some shit. I think it's wild to to kind of see how much borrowing or straight lifting, however you want to call it, happens. I mean, I remember like I think just being a fan of music and stuff in general, like of all genres, it's so interesting to see what was considered a failure as a song. Like, you remember the band Fastball, like out of the the mid to early nineties. I had that song the way like uh, any road or anyone can see the road that they walked on like that fucking song it was like their big oh hit. Yeah. yeah yeah um that song. so they put out a they put out a song it was like their third single and i don't remember what it's called but i you know i remember the chorus and i was like it's all right it's a little slower and it was considered a flop and then yeah. my wife and i are driving to the grocery store one day like top 40 radio is on and like literally like almost verbatim the chorus was the chorus of that song and it was like yeah that's you know number it was a top 10 hit and i was like it's weird that a song that was considered a failure gets lifted for the chorus or whatever or a beat or something and now all of a sudden is is a top hit and it just goes to show it's like do you think any of those producers or people along the way were like you know we're sorry that we didn't treat it as a hit or said it was a flop when it really obviously wasn't we just either a didn't push it well enough it just you know whatever and it's so interesting that music yeah. can exist like that because I'm sure you've had plenty of A and R people who are no longer in the industry tell you like, oh, we don't hear the hit, we don't hear the single, go back, write some more shit, and then you're just like, oh yeah, oh these are good songs. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's, it sucks. It sucks when you you know that you there, there's something there, you know, maybe maybe you're, you're just a little ahead of the curve or whatever, but you know, it's just weird how music works out. But I mean, you know, it, and, and it probably never really works out the way it should work out but at the same time you can't complain about it because it just it's going to keep going and uh you know but it is a really weird thing but you know hey like if, if somebody gets credit for what they did you know like uh and, and they lift a chorus out of it or something and maybe the song 
made like 50 bucks before and then now like it's a, it's a top 10 hit then maybe the, maybe homeboy is getting paid and he needs the money so it's all good everybody's got to eat i i don't think i actually i know i didn't ask you this because it's not something i probably would have thought of back then when we were talking but out of curiosity what was there any trepidation on your side from the band to put out a cover song first versus something maybe like Stitches or, you know, any of the other songs off of Candy Ass back in the day as your first single? Or was everyone kind of unanimously like, let's put out the cover first? No, we actually we actually um, did. Uh, the, I think Warner Brothers actually did release Stitches for like uh, like the first song I heard from Orgy on the radio was Stitches, you know on K rock. And then I was like, that's, that's cool. Um, and then <laughs> they decided to just jump right off that and go on to blue Monday. And that was that, you know? And so, uh, and it, you know, it's funny, oddly enough, as good as stitches did on like TRL and like, you know, being a big video and, you know, um, people bought the records and, and all that kind of stuff. It's weird that, um, it, it, it never really got picked back up, um, on K rock or, something like that. Like after the blue Monday thing, I think they were just so like orgied out because of blue Monday. They were just like, okay, that's enough, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, we started with stitches then went to the cover song. So it actually wasn't technically first. And well, maybe that was the reason that was like a, that, that was, that, that was like a, like a, like a, like a probably set up by the record company. Cause I, I don't recall saying, let's do this for like four weeks and then we'll jump on blue Monday. So it's not technically first. <laughs> Well, I was going to say, because I feel yeah. like everyone just, you know, like someone else is playing the, the Sick New World thing, Fest, uh, is Alien Ant Farm, and everyone just associates them with the Michael Jackson cover. But what no one song. really seemingly remembers is that they had a song called Movies that was f the first single off that record. Then they put out yeah. this, you know, then they ended up putting out the, the Smooth Criminal cover, reshot the video, like a whole brand new video for Movies, and then released oh, yeah. it as a, a secondary single again. And it was just like this weird thing that it's like sometimes it's funny to remember if you're old enough to remember yeah. when an album was coming out to be like, I feel like there was a single first and then the, you know, a cover or a bigger single happened. And then all of a sudden it was like, let's try to reshop the, the first single all over again yeah. and just redo it. Like it didn't no, it's exist. Just, it's, yeah. It's the Mandela effect. You know, yeah. Live. We're doing it live. <laughs> we're, we're doing the Mandela effect right before your eyes. Like, you know, I don't know. But uh, how did it work when they uh, released that? I, I mean, I know those guys, but I don't know uh, how that worked out for them. Did it, did no, it I was just using that. Um, no, because I don't remember movies really being the... I think everyone kind of moved on to the song Attitude. I think that was the third single off of that record that did a lot better because it was a lot different yeah. than either the other two singles. But it was yeah. just kind of a, a interesting thing that you know, when you think of the band like them and, and you guys and, and probably even Cold Chamber with uh, Shock the Monkey and Fear Factory with uh, Cars and stuff like that, that it was yeah. sort of this era of, you know, doing covers from, you know, before my generation and, and probably more in your actual childhood of growing up. But it's this thing where yeah. I I could see maybe trepidation on, on your guys' side where it's like, we don't want to do a cover as our first single. We want our first single to be this, or we don't really want blue Monday to really be the pushed song as a whole. Cause it's, it's not really ours. We're proud of it, but like we want to stand on our own, yeah. with our own music. So, you know, I don't know what I thought like back then. I, I, I don't know that, you know, I just, I, I wanted to do the song cause I thought it was cool. And, uh, and it worked out and, uh, you know, you know, nine out of 10 times people are going to go, oh, you know, or do the band that did blue Monday. And then they're, you know, they're like, Oh, that, or yeah. You know, but, and, and we'll always get like, you know, no matter what, how many songs did good or whatever. Um, we're always going to get, you know, that's, that's the, that's the dog tag around your neck is a, you know, army army tag. That's always going to be that song. And that's cool. Like, I, I don't care because there's, there was plenty of others. And it's like, if that's what you need to, uh, you know, get the, get the visual and, 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 realize who it was or whatever that's cool with me you know what i mean i don't mind that it was someone else's song but you know once 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 they think about that they're like oh yeah and then the video with the glass box and the what yeah i remember that and you know the dreams of digital oh yeah like you know so then it's like you know all that stuff comes to, to mind too so so it just takes a minute you know but that's fine <laughs> i guess that's that's a, fine, another fun question yeah. in the in the day and age where music videos aren't really maybe as prevalent as they used to be, 
what are some of your memories of the yeah. stitches video? Cause I remember, I remember it just looking so different from anything I'd really ever seen, <clears throat> even growing up in the MTV generation of seeing all the music yeah. videos coming up. How was it being in those, <laughs> in those boxes and having them just move around? Uh, that was the craziest shit ever. Um, a, I had like a migraine for some reason that they just decided to hit me like, you know, a ton of bricks, but uh, that wasn't even the hard part. Uh, um, it, there was no air inside that thing. So, so basically it's uh, this thing called the gimbal and they, uh, they use it for like car, uh, car commercials. So they'll have like mm -hmm. a car on, on a platform and they strap it down and then make it move that you drive it with a wheel actually, you know, like, like that. And, um, they, they had us in this, so they put a box on the gimbal and put these patent white patent leather floor things in there. They were like this thick. So it was, the floor was like, you know, you, you know, it wasn't solid or anything like that. So that was kind of weird. And then some asshole like driving it, like pushing it and like jerking it around and like going like that, you know, like you can, you can drive it any kind of way and uh, it pulls two G's of force. So imagine that like you, you're, <laughs> you're rocking out and you're standing on the ground and all of a sudden the thing goes boom like this. And you're like, uh, can you not do that anymore? Cause my head just, you know, I don't know, hit the back wall, <laughs> you know, or like whatever. And so, yeah, like one minute you're on the floor and then the, the box goes this way and then you're stepping on the wall and you're like, okay, this is just weird, you know? And people have guitars with, you know, in the box too. And so they're coming at you with a guitar head stuck. You know what I mean? You know, and you're just like, eh. So it was pretty crazy. Yeah, I think but, that was the thing I kept yeah, thinking so of was that it probably would be very, I don't want to say claustrophobic, but just the fact that presumably there oh, would be a was, lot of, like it'd be hot as shit in there would be my thing. 100% claustrophobic, no air. So we had to keep taking one of the, uh, the, the, the platinum panels out, putting air conditioning into the box and getting back <laughs> in it. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. I, it's I it's all these pair, things that people wear pants. If you literally close in that video, I, there's one scene where you can actually see the rip in my like white patent leather pants with these or whatever they're made out of pleather pants with uh, these straps on them, you know. <laughs> and so um, uh, there, there was just this big. Uh, like, I got a, like literally stepped up on the on the wall that was you know that became the floor, and when I did that it um like ripped the like a, a hole in the crotch of my pants so it's like you could actually see it in one of the scenes in there if you look real close <laughs> it's funny this is possibly a very weird question and it it, it was funny because i came to the question knowing that we were going to talk uh so i guess it's the 20th anniversary of uh evanescence's first record and i saw that they're coming out with a, a makeup palette or it already sold out i guess um but it was interesting because like as you, you see other avenues now for for artists and bands to kind of do something for these like limited edition things to collaborate or commemorate records like Deftones put out its Kila for the 20th anniversary of White Pony. And just seeing these different things. I remember as I saw that, I, my thought was just like, why isn't anyone ever hit up Jay for or like any of these guys in Orgy for like to do like a makeup line or anything like that. Cause I, and I actually saw, I think uh, about a week ago, someone was like, uh, I think it was an announcement of the tour or whatever coming up that it was just like, don't mind me. I'm going to like practice getting my eyebrows, right. Just like Jay. And I was just like, I mean, it seems like people still think of you guys as a very fashion forward and very fashion, like something that, help them in fashion and, and makeup yeah. and so forth that it's like to me it seems like a no-brainer like opportunity that someone should have reached Whoa. out to you and been like we should do something in this space okay so so there may be a bit of an issue with that because uh for starters jeffree star uh you know, you know who that is you know who that is he, he actually lives a, uh, out, lived out here i don't know if he still does he made he made a makeup line called orgy and it's just kind of weird and i was like thanks bro and he's like no problem uh, anyway, so that, that was kind of weird, but I think he beat us the punch on that one. But what I do have going on may, may not be fashion based or anything. Um, I'm partners with, uh, some people and, um, we're doing like, you know, like band merch and stuff like that, you know, it's, um, uh, it's called yummy and, uh, we're doing like, you know, popcorn and, you know, like 
like legal mushroom gummies, um, HHC popcorn, regular popcorn, different colors. Uh, we're trying to like get some of these bands that are on the Sick New World Festival to um, uh, carry some of those because it's really cool. Like if I like, I'd love to show you what it looks like, but it, my phone is right here so i can't right. really show it to you on the phone but uh yeah it's really cool it's called yummy corn y-u-m-i and uh it's gonna be a big thing um yeah i don't know which ones of my friends bands are gonna end up carrying it or doing it but uh yeah it's, it's really cool so and, and the popcorn's fucking delicious like it's really really good like i was like popcorn what, what bro like uh <laughs> my, my, my boy armani who's actually at my house right now he uh he does you know he makes the popcorn like really special and he puts the time and effort into it and it actually really tastes really good so kind of fucks all that other popcorn up out there you know <laughs> you know i'm not saying that you know i'm not going head to head with anybody but like it's it's really fucking good and you know there's all these flavors and uh you know since cannabis is legal you can do the um you know you, there's all kinds of thc ones you can do and cbd ones and so there's like there's like so many that it, it gets confusing that uh to, to name them all but uh they're all really really tasty i've tried them you know I think it's interesting that everyone like, edibles edibles really fuck me up though. Like I just get wasted on edibles, you know. Like, I oh, take out of this brownie thing, whatever. Just like, oh, you know. But um, yeah. Well, it's like I mean, kind of going in that same route. Like this past weekend, we went up to uh, up north to the lakeshore with like twenty different people and stayed in like a '70s style pseudo mansion type thing where the, everything was just seven like every room was like brady bunch partridge family like laughing like all this kind of stuff and then you walk into like one of the main spaces and it's just this like giant rec room that all i could think of was i was like this feels like something that i've probably seen in like vintage 70s like pornos like we're just or like no pun intended orgies are just happening like just this giant couch <laughs> and a hot tub in the living room and like all that kind of stuff but it was interesting because like one of the things i decided to do because i was like not going to know like half these people and we're just in the middle of nowhere. Like I'm just going to take shrooms, but I hate eating them. So I invested in stuff to make pills. Uh, and a friend of mine brought his okay. and was just like, just started eating them. And then he got way, way too fucked up. And essentially he was like, I was in like another dimension having full blown conversations with myself. And I was like, <laughs> all right. And I was like, I had enough and figured out how to like with the amount I had to just do enough to where like I was having a good time, but it was, it's, yeah. I love doing I'm, that I'm shit, but I think to, the same things. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull up a picture. Uh, I'm pulling up a picture of what the, uh, the yummy, the yummy corn looks like. So I don't know if you can see this, but, Let's see. Can you see that a little bit? Oh, that looks cool. Yeah, yeah looks cool. it's it's, it's yeah, the popcorn it's really is actually good. like gold colored as well. What's that? I said the popcorn is actually like that color. Uh, you, you can we can make it that color. We we can make it pink, whatever you know. So I think uh, a lot of uh, we're, we're talking to some pretty high profile artists. I don't want to say who, but uh, I think uh, once a couple of them get it, like the other ones are going to want to get it too because it's a no brainer. And, uh, you know, it's it's a money maker for bands. And, you know, um, I think that fans enjoy it. Like, you know, like, uh, it's like it's like buying, like, you know, like, like I don't know, like, Sweet Barbie dogs. dolls and never pick them <laughs> out of the package. You could, you could keep the popcorn forever if you want, you know, like, so, yeah. So I've definitely approached some people. And then some people are actually just finding out about it. And, like, some pretty high-profile people are trying to um, – jump in so we'll see how it goes it's pretty exciting right now actually and and re i wasn't even a part of it at first and then i just recently became you know i've known armani for for a long time and um yeah so i just re recently became a partner in that situation so i feel like we'll in today's world anymore you have to kind of be business minded was that something that you've always been Ben is very business minded, or is that something really in the last couple? No, of, like, however long that you had to look for adventures. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I used to totally suck at it. It's it's just it w just wasn't my. It's not that I wasn't interested in it. And I mean, you know, who who doesn't want you know to to have multiple you know uh, income streams and things like that? And and I've, I've always understood it. It's just not my strong suit, and I don't really like being a salesman. But you kind of have to when you do music anyway. So it's like, come on, who who are we kidding here? You know, even if you're 
underground and alternative and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, um, so so I think it's it's you, you got to wear a lot of hats in this industry if you want to make any money doing music because we get paid the least. You know, people think, <laughs> oh yeah, you sell all these records, you you must be just balling, bro. It's like. I mean, sure, <laughs> you know, what, define balling. Like, you know, I got a basketball. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Yeah. What are some things that, what if if you can talk about them? What are some things you know? You obviously talked about yummy there. Like, what are some things that yeah. you're interested in moving into 2023 that maybe we'll be seeing you uh, be a part of outside of music? Yeah, I have a um, I have a water company that I'm doing, and um, can't really talk too much about that either. But it's 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 really good. It's um, it's happening. You know, um, can't really talk too much about it because uh, I'm working on some s- similar situation. Like, you know, but yeah, uh, yeah. So um, what else? Um, I you know, there's a lot of things like you know, there's a couple of soundproofing things that uh, I'm. I'm, I'm uh, I'm, I'm working on right now uh, developing with a, a really good friend of mine. Um, and that is going to really kind of, I think it's something that could revolutionize uh, building um, codes and stuff like that. Like as far as like, you know, um, like, I don't know, right now you could hear the person downstairs in my house. Like they're so loud right now. Like, you know what I mean? While we're trying <laughs> to do this, I don't know if you can hear it, but like I fucking can hear the fuck out of it and they can hear everything, you know, I could be like literally talking to you and they probably hear every word I'm saying. So, yeah. I think so it's, it's, it's uh, interesting to but, see. But it, 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 would, it would eliminate that. It would eliminate that altogether. And there's, there's several ways of doing it, but like, yeah. Uh, another thing I can't tell, it's all secretive. Man. No, it's, it's, it's just, there's a lot of things in the works right now. And so you don't want to jeopardize things by saying too much, you know, so that's all. No, it's well, I was going to say, I, yeah. I think watching shows like Shark Tank and stuff like that, you know, have really made people be aware of pursuing, you know, I don't want to say dumb ideas, but just these ideas where they're like, I think I can make a better version of whatever. So why not? Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when you start looking into these things, you have to be super, super on the down low about it because either there might be patents that you're applying for that makes your product completely different than anything else on the market and uh, things like that. So I totally get it. Trust me, trust me. Trust me, your inner circle could be uh, like full of ripoff artists. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, whoa, bro. Like, really? Like, you know, it's crazy. Like, you know, uh, I'm not, you know, pointing any fingers, naming any names, but like, you know, people, like, people just like can't wait to fucking jack some shit. Like, and I think it's just like, bro, come up with your own stupid idea. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, even if it sucks, just put it out. Like, take a chance. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't need to fuck with my shit. Like, you know, but there's a <laughs> lot of people out there. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are just like, just, just don't, don't really write or don't really do anything. And they take a lot of credit and it's fucking honest to God truth. And I will stand by that a hundred percent. I think everybody knows that. Like, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I still make music. Right. I, I mean, I got, I got a song that's doing really, really well right now. And I'm very grateful and blessed and all that kind of stuff. But like, you know, I, I mean, it's one of those things. It's like, you know, I, I always wanted to be that person that could just like do like the drums, and like the bass, the guitar or whatever. I kind of suck at guitar, you know, and piano. I'm not really good at, but I can play the fuck out of a computer. So I, um, <laughs> you know, I feel like, I feel like there's nothing I can't do, you know what I mean? And so uh, I just continue with that. You know, and, and and I love writing with other people. Don't get me wrong; I'm completely open to that. And um, you, you know, even if it didn't seem like I was before, like I, I've always really like loved that. You know, so I mean, I started off like you know, my uncles and I would write weird songs together, like you know, and then you know, when I was a little kid, and then yep. Oh no! Uh, so that kind of grew into me doing my own thing. You know. Yeah. So, and I, I, I've always been like, you know, I used to like pride myself on programming drum machines to sound like real drummers. And I'm like, that's so stupid. It took me three days to do this. Like, you know, you know, let's just get a drummer to come in for an hour and just bust it out. Like, you know, or learn how to play it yourself. So, you know, I do a bit of both. I think, I think today's industry now, you know, like there's been a big thing. I guess it's actually been going on for probably like, five or six months at this point, but like it's been recirculating again because a festival promoter over in Europe, I think somewhere was like, 
we're doing a festival and it's a hundred percent, no backing tracks. It's all a hundred percent live bands. And granted, when they put out the lineup, I was like, I don't think I know any of these fucking bands. Like they weren't successful at any point. And like, you know, to a mainstream level, like I have no idea who any of these bands are, but it, yeah. it re sparked the conversation and or debate between someone like Eddie trunk and, and Ronnie from falling in reverse where it's like, you know, Eddie's always shitting and slagging on bands for, you know, using laptops and backing tracks and all this kind of stuff. And it's one of those things where a lot of times, honestly, I feel like the older generation of people or music fans is just like, doesn't understand like what, what the difference between a backing track or using a laptop and so forth. And it's like, yeah, I had yeah. a sample or I'm using something that is like, would I mean, that's, require that's, that's, a hundred cool, people dude. to be on stage and I can't do it. Yeah. The, yeah, like, I respect, I respect his, yeah, I respect his, uh, his view on that for sure. Um, you know, it's just like, uh, it, it's a little hard to do that. Like, like it's a little hard to do that if you did, you know, I don't know, 75, 80% of the workload yourself. It's like, uh, how would I pull that off? Like I'd literally have to have shit strapped to my shoulders and like, you know, <laughs> be like, you know like, I, I don't know. So, so no, I get what he's saying. Like, you know, it's like, uh, I agree that bands should not fake it so much, you know, like it's like, it's like, bro, you, I mean, you know, but I think all these bands really can play uh, some stuff, but like, you know, you, you know, and I get this, this, the, you know, the, um, you know, it, it, it's the need to, you know, sound like your records do. So that people think you're fucking as epic as your records are. And, you know, that's a whole nother debate right there. It's just like, uh, it's really hard. Like, you know, unless you want to be like that band. See, I like to get the other band sound checks too. So I, I'll, 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 I'll put it this way. Like I, I'll love to take three or four bands up there and let the first fucking band to the support band all have the same level of sound as I do and give them a chance as much as I, you know, I have to be out there headlining or doing whatever. And it's like, I always want to give them a, a fair shake. So I'd, I'll utilize some backing tracks and I'll leave the real playing up to the bands that are coming on before me. If that, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, um, so that I can give them a sound check instead of being like, you know, um, okay, we need this to sound like the record every day you show up, you know, even if you bring a sound man with you, it's like, you know, you're gonna have to start from scratch at every arena pretty much or venue or wherever you're going to play. And, uh, not that we do arenas. I'm just saying that, you know, no matter who the band is, you're going to have to, you know, it's pretty hard to, to to be able to recreate your record live on stage. I'll tell you that. Like, and that's anybody. You know what I mean? It's like, I am not about. You know, guys are probably like, I am not about to bring my you know 1935 Les Paul with this amp that's like not even mine that I rented and like you know how am I going to get the you know I don't know if you want to be a stickler for like your records or whatever. Um, you know, there's no ever that you're never going to duplicate what you did in the studio on stage. You're just not going to be able to do that. So right. backing tracks, hence backing tracks were invented, you know, so that, you know, you get the, the overall sound. You don't have to over overdo it with backing tracks though. Right. hundred you know, percent. But, but they're, 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 they're pretty, ne they're pretty necessary in music these days. I mean, let's face it, bro. Like, I mean, I get what homie's saying, but like, you know, you gotta, you know, th there's a give and take. So, well, I think even like an interesting take, because I feel like a band like corn, did it where they had the musicians, they hired the people to come out, but they weren't on stage with them. And everyone had a problem with that. And it's like, just like, there's no fucking way. Like <laughs> uh, like, corn, like, like uh, corn oh, did yeah. that when they didn't have Brian, they had like his replacement behind the stage. And then I think from what I understand, under, like most of the other people the were stage. backstage or under. Yeah. yeah. And everyone seemed yeah. to bitch about that too. So it's like, even when you have the people literally playing it and you know, they're there, People still are like, well, it's yeah, they, why not? Have, like, I don't yeah. know. It's if people will bitch either way. I admit that's a little that 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 part was a little weird. It's it's like because where's the guy playing the, the part or whatever? But the, so I get that. But like I, I, you know, I see maybe maybe, maybe that was kind of cool for um, them to do because uh, you know they they they're trying to pay homage to the homie that, that wasn't there. You know what I mean? With that, so it's like you know, hey, there's this big empty part of the stage that, that used to belong to you, bro. Like, can you get back here and? start making some music with us and then you know he's back in the band and all that and so you know those are those are my homies so i got i gotta you know stick with i, I gotta err on the side of that was probably the a cool thing that they did you know you know i uh that's, that's that. kind of the the last few questions so i can let you get back to your day since you got friends there um yeah. and this is 
kind of a you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. It's just a question and a little backstory. So I had the the guest I just had on and released uh, yesterday the episode. Um, I kind of lost contact with the dude like i got a new phone lost the phone numbers and all that shit and through finding an old laptop that had all my i messages on it was like oh fuck there's his phone number texted him to be like hey is this still you like so on and so forth and we're kind of getting back together and it was kind of a reminder of you know kind of not letting so much time go by before reaching out to people and and kind of reconnecting and i've been over the last week really making an effort to kind of reach out to people that i feel like i've kind of fallen by the wayside of our friendships and so forth and uh, thinking about people I've lost in the last, you know, couple years, close friends. And it was something that, you know, kind of when looking at the the festival for sick new world, the lineup and so forth and seeing, you know, some of these bands kind of getting back together or, you know, like I'm about to go see a band reunion on uh, a couple weeks out in Seattle. And it's just, you know, I've kind of been thinking about mending fences here, and just kind of all comes, that shit. Here comes, yep, the, yep. here comes the question. <laughs> so the question, the question is though, is, you know, I've, I've had Amir on, I've had Ryan on and Ryan and I were supposed to do something, but to go to rehab and, and get his life back on track. And Good for him. it was yeah. one of those things where I was wondering, you know, in light of mainly speaking to Ryan personally, where it's like, does seeing something like that, that he's going through where he, you know, is now kind of on the other side of his demons and, and kind of all that stuff in light of some of the people that we've all lost in our lives. Is that something where maybe you would be like, fuck the band just friendship like do you have you reached out or is the are you guys at least on good speaking terms and the f- fences mended there or it's like where well, that's let's start with something. ryan and i used to ryan and i used to party yeah, let's start with ryan and i used to party a lot together you know what i mean back in the day and we used to have so much fun doing it and everything else and then it's like everything else it, it gets too much you know uh so you gotta like taper off and, and you know sober up and do what you gotta do and uh I, I really think that was fantastic that he did that. And I love that he did that for himself. And that's great. Uh, uh, you know, whatever method you need to, to, to get you there, uh, whatever works, you know, so I, I, you know, rehabs for quitters, like, you know, that's what him and I used to say, but, uh, but no, it's not at all. Like, and, and I think that, you know, uh, it's a really good thing that uh, he did that. And I'm very proud of him for that. And I did, um, when he made that announcement, I, I right away I was like, "Yo, way to go!" You know, good for you, man. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean that's cool. Like you know that he did that. So I, you know, I don't really have much else to say about that. But that's cool that they've yeah. been on the show and all that stuff too. And and then uh, I thought you were going to ask me the reunion question. So no, um, but it's not, no, that's yeah, I'm not a pro- that's been beaten to death. <laughs> and like I'm sure everyone, anytime any of you have. Anytime any of you probably get asked, especially in light of a, a festival like this, everyone's like, is this going to be the reunion of the original lineup? And to me, it's like I said, my, maybe it's my if age. It was, yeah. If it, if I was going to yeah, yeah. so, say my, my focus of being almost 40. And like I said, just being more about human connection and friendships and all that shit. My thing is more of like, you guys were friends before you were probably in a band. And to me, like, I know from my perspective, I would be more interested to be like, have fit, like, are you guys at least amicable now to where like, you're just friends. Like, that's it. Like, fuck the band. Man, uh, you come and go. But, I mean, so to me, like that was I, more interesting to me to know. That's interesting. I mean, that's a, that's a good take on it. It's like, um, not everybody shares your, um, you know, your enthusiasm for like, you know, I, like I have zero, I, I don't hold grudges or any of that kind of stuff. Like as, as much as, uh, some people do, but I can say that, uh, that you know, I'm 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 good with them. It's like you know, the, like foul shit. But like it's like you know, with any band, like it's like you know, you can have your problems uh, eventually, if if not right away. And uh, it's not that there's a lack of love there for any of those people, or you know, total distaste. Um, you know, some some things really aren't cool, and and you know, and people should know that. And you know, I'm still me, and I've been me the whole time, and and I still do what I do, and. You know, I, I don't know what they do so much, but like I know that they get it done. So, but like they, you know, they put out more music than I do, and that's that's cool. I mean, I just work on a lot of other stuff, you know. So, um, but nothing against those people, and uh, we don't talk a lot. Um, but I saw, you know, like I saw Ryan at the Nam show. Uh, it was good seeing him, and you know, we we just 
picked up right where we left off, just laughing about a bunch of dumb stuff. And then, you know, he, he went his way and uh, me and my homies went my way. So, but, uh, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're who they are. You know what I mean? Like, it's hard for me to like really get into it a lot because, no, for sure. you know, yeah. And I don't, I, I don't know how they approached what, the question when you asked them that, you know, it's, but it's like pretty uh, much the same, same sure, way you're doing it. Like just act. amicable and everyone's be cool. Yeah. It's it's just a weird question. I, I you know it's like people ask me. They, I should be prepared for it every time, but I'm, I never really am. It's kind of blindsides me, so I'm just like, oh, well, you know. But you know, I I knew it was coming at some point. But look, look as far as uh, you know, like doing a reunion thing or something like that, I am not opposed. You know what I mean? Like especially if the, you know, I'm sure that uh, if it was the original lineup of Orgy, like it probably would have been a lot higher on that list. You know, I don't really know. I'm just saying that. Yeah. But um. Yeah, the people have uh, offered us to do some, at least talk to me about um, doing some shows for some pretty good money. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I it's not that I wouldn't do that. I, I definitely could do like one tour with the old band and, you know, keep working on the orgy, you know, the current lineup, um, you know, along the way. But yeah, I, I, I would definitely consider doing some stuff. Anything's possible is what I'm saying. Yeah, 100%. I think... I think for me, like I said, there's, you know, like I had uh, the owner of Trust Guild Records on. Uh, we did a chat like last week. And I know a lot, he's, uh -huh. as a record label owner, like the narrative out about him is he's a piece of shit and a lot of other things. And, you know, Ooh. I, I'm uh, the owner of Josh Graybell, uh, the owner of, I think you got a phone call. Ooh. So you're probably, it's the owner of Trust Guild Records. Um, they were like a label in the late 90s, early 2000s, hardcore label. And uh, having him on, like the narrative about him is just that he's a shitty dude. He, you know, fucked over a lot of his bands and so forth. And, you know, I kind of had the opportunity to have him on. And it seems the narrative now has kind of changed. A lot of people have, you know, grown up and, and you know, mended fences, fences and so forth. And to me, I like I had kind of reached out to some people that were on the label well, that I'm friends well, with. I mean, did, he, did, 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 did they grow up? Did he, did he finally pay them or something? Or So uh, one of the things he did is because uh, they got up, they worked out a distribution deal with Universal uh, at one point and Sony at one point. And he had gone back to Sony and asked them to basically wipe the debts clean that all the bands owed and basically re-release the music and give all the artists a 50% royalty rate uh, for their music going forward to kind of help offset the money that they lost. And it's like, you know, I think that oh, honestly, cool. speaking yeah. to him, I think like you can, yeah. yeah, I think you can get the vibe that he is someone who loves music and loves his bands. And unfortunately the music industry just kind of did what it does to artists and, and label types and so forth. And he tried to right the wrongs and, and make it right by his bands, even if it was 10 years after the fact. But I think it speaks to the fact that yeah. he wanted to do that and wanted to right the wrongs and make things better. And to me, I think sure. as someone who has gone through, you know, I've kicked someone out of this house, you know, we weren't friends for five, six, seven years. And then it took the death of another yeah. roommate that lived here to where we squashed our shit and just realized it's like, we can, we we can be those people and we can be petty or we can be realize that life is bigger than us and that tragedies happen oh, and yeah. we should just squash the shit and move on. And so to me, like I said, I think it's because of my age where, you know, I'm losing more friends and I'm having these things happen where I think more about the hum human Same. side of these things. So to me, Same, and I, yeah, yeah, what I love I to hear, you. like you're, you're reuniting a hundred percent, but at the end of the day, I'm more interested in being like, I hope you guys as people and as friends are good because that is more important to me. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. How I'm sorry to make it weird. I'm sorry to make that. <laughs> no, 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 it's cool. I mean, I don't know how important that is to them. But like, you know, I'm, I, I don't, you know, it's, 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 it's all water to the bridge for, for as far as I'm concerned, but uh, you know, like, like, you know, like, they're doing their I thing. And I'm doing mine. I have, I don't, I don't, I don't have any ill will towards anybody, but I, like I said, I don't, know that everybody doesn't like have some weird like chip on their shoulder because you know but i'm cool like i don't even think about it but it's like i get asked about it so it's like you know i feel like sometimes i don't want to talk about it but you know it's it's, it's just I, um the, to, to keep a grudge you know yeah 100 i guess at the end of the day that's all you can really hope for is just to be supportive of each other and sometimes i think that's the other sure. side of these things is you just kind of as you get older, sometimes you agree to disagree. And, and sometimes the best thing to do is just kind of exist yeah. 
separately and, and just i think right. some bands like probably should have like divorce court yeah you know what i'm saying like divorce court for bands like you know I, <laughs> I, I see people go through some crazy shit way crazier than what the stuff that me and those guys have gone through you know right it's like you know like i said i have no lack of love for them or whatever but some bands bro like i've seen some some throwdowns happen <laughs> you know? um Kind of the last question I have for you, you know, we already talked about the new single Empty coming out. I would assume there's obviously either an EP or an, an album kind of on the horizon to, to complement it. Uh, Sick New World uh, is happening in May. Um, what is kind of the the beginning part of 2023 looking like for you guys? What are you excited for? Really good. Like, I mean, that of all things that, that I'm just I'm just so glad to be able to go and like see, you know, um, a lot of my friends' bands, you know, that I haven't seen in a long time. And some new, like, I really want to see Spirit Box and Turnstile and a couple of those bands just because, uh, and, and I love Fever 333 and, you know, stuff like that. I want to see a lot of those dudes and then see all my old homies, you know, too. So, you know, that's, it's cool. Um, I, you know, I'm excited as hell about that. And, you know, some, some European stuff and some, um, um latin america dates and stuff like that mexico and some other parts and and uh, yeah so I'm, I'm excited about the touring aspect of it more than anything and of course releasing these new songs which is going to make up a record you know at some point just single after single let's just say it seems to be the the world that we live in with the you know singles just yeah. perpetually dropping versus the build up to an album that you've already heard yeah. eight of the 10 tracks on <laughs> and and on empty speaking of um you know which we're doing this uh we're doing this like empty giveaway thing um uh so on empty you know we're, we're almost a week and two days in and it's already over a hundred thousand streams and you know really high on some playlists uh on spotify and stuff and i want to thank everybody for being supportive of that and um keep 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 playing so we can keep moving up the up the ranks here again and uh yeah it's, it's doing really well but it's also one of the the lighter songs that uh that is going to come out after that one um there's some heavy shit coming like it like like you wouldn't even believe you're like what you know a lot of people are doing that but i, I always kind of wanted orgy to be like that like really you can just do whatever you want that's what it's all about you know fuck staying in the lane it's just not my style you know i think you've consistently like proved that over everything you've done i mean even candy ass into you know but honestly just everything you've done there's not really any consistent like, the consistency is almost in the inconsistency of like the styles the genres whatever that it's i don't know i always think it's interesting like i said when talking to people and they associate the group with one record and two singles really that yeah. it's like there's so much more i mean even like dreams and fiction isn't doesn't sound like anything really off of any like candy ass but like vapor transmissions doesn't really sound consistent throughout the whole record either or compared to candy ass like i don't know i right. think that's been the thing i've always enjoyed about your band is just that it's it's a it's whatever it wants to be and either you fuck with it or yeah. you don't right right yeah exactly and i'm cool with whatever like you're never, you're never gonna make everybody happy you know but uh but um you know like like i'm trying to do you know what i want to do and you know also you know it's, it's great to make people happy at the same time if you can so right and uh yeah not totally suck so <laughs> yeah that's that last question for you where can everyone find you or whatever you would like to plug online um orgymusic.com uh jayg music on uh insta and then um i think it's just um wait so it's yeah jg music on instagram um jake gordon on twitter or something like that um and the orgy music page on facebook so those are like well, thanks. our main portal for him. well thanks again for taking the time and and honestly you know the the weirdness kind of of that last couple questions i asked you but thank you for answering yeah, it I'll um do. i think you you honestly got to the crux of what I actually was going to ask is when you're like, Oh, here we go. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> not where yeah, I'm going. But, um, yeah, you, you might want to edit like, some did... of that down. It was just, it was a little lengthy, but like, you know, my explanation, because, uh, it's, it's a really weird subject to talk about still for some reason. So, and, um, 
Yeah, it's all good. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Oh, cool. Right on. But thank you for the time. That's all and, I got. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll look forward to hopefully seeing you stateside uh, sometime in the next right, couple months and uh, come see you and hang out and see you do the thing. Sounds good. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. So that was my conversation with Jay. Want to thank him once again for taking the time uh, for really, you know, toward the end there. I know he thought I was going to ask about an orgy reunion with the original lineup. And it was funny because when I was trying to ask the question, you know, I think there's a little bit sometimes I think and I don't want to just say like journalism or podcasters or whatever. I actually want to go a little bit deeper than that and just say, I think honestly, people, I think people sometimes when we want to know a, an answer to a question we have, sometimes we forget that there are people involved, like that there are actual tangible people we are talking about and discussing. And therefore they, we don't take those people's feelings and, and people's feelings in general, or the, the situations that we're asking about into consideration before you just kind of go like, so tell me about this thing. And it might be a really fucking hard thing to discuss. And when I think with bands and, you know, I'll, I'll at least speak more to just this situation with the guys in orgy. So obviously everyone knows that they, they're not a band anymore. They're not all together. You know, obviously Amir and Ryan are off doing Julian K. Uh, Ryan's this vocalist of Edema now. And, you know, obviously orgy is still continuing with Jay and, you know, the band that he's put together at this point. And it's a thing where I think sometimes people forget that like they're people, and I know in my my own personal life, there have been times where I have had struggles to be friends with my friends for various reasons. Uh, famously, obviously, like late last year, you heard me talk about my friend that had passed that I hadn't talked to in like 10 years. And I think sometimes it, it's those perspectives that I have where it's like, I'm never going to have the ability to to call up my friend or randomly run into him or or whatever and kind of make amends for the 10 years we lost just due to, I mean, I'll own my side of it, just not feeling like I enjoyed who he was as a person anymore. And, or, and especially where I was at in my life and still am. And it's one of those things, I guess resentments, that's a good word, a resentment uh, for how things transpire between us. And I feel like sometimes in light of myself having friends who have gone to rehabs and, and I've lost some friends due to, to drugs and stuff like that, that it becomes one of those things where when you start losing friends, you start realizing like, man, I, I wish I would have taken the time that I didn't have to make up for the time we lost. And I, I never will get that opportunity. And to me, with bands especially, or like some of your best friends that you spend a lot of years with, that's... Those are like your brothers. Like those are people that you you've really been through some shit with and you've shared some of the highest highs and the lowest lows. Like you can't get to know someone more intimately, I think, than being in those experiences of of what being in the music industry and being in a band will put you through. And I knew when like, you know, I had reached out to Ryan uh, myself when he, you know, admitted he was going to rehab for his his, you know, problems and so forth. And it's one of those where I could see that being the catalyst for for Jay and a lot of the other guys in the band to maybe squash some of the shit and just become amicable again as people. And so to me, like that's where I'm at. And I know I kind of explained that in the chat, like that's where I was going, but it was kind of weird. Cause like I figured maybe like talking about like sort of the messiness of kind of owning up that it's like, yeah, I, I kind of feel dumb that we wasted all this time, not getting to know each other and, and wasted it. You know, that's that's kind of where I was coming from. And yeah, you know, would it be cool to do it? Have them do an orgy reunion? Absolutely. I mean, I would go see it, but I would still go see those guys now, you know, as their individual products and all that kind of stuff and just support them because they're good people. So it's um, it's interesting doing these things sometimes uh, in the next couple episodes that are coming up with chats. I've done I've tried to be a little more still inquisitive about things that I want to know, but I've tried to be a little bit more. Uh, on the level of not overstepping, not being egregious with not taking into account that these are people we're talking about. These are people's lives, people's emotions. And, you know, I just, A, want to thank everyone who actually answers these questions and actually goes on that journey with me. I mean, it'd be very easy to just be like, I don't want to talk about that. And, you know, Jay really kind of, I think, did a good job of explaining where things are, where things were, still being there for his friend. But, 
you know, honestly, like I kind of get Jay's side of things where it's just like I, they're doing their thing. I'm doing my thing. Like, yeah, I'm proud of him. And we just move on because, um, I mean, that's essentially what I did uh, with my friend that ended up passing. Like, you know, they didn't end up making it. I just we were amicable and we just kind of moved on. And that's life. Um, but I, I guess sometimes we just kind of lose sight of that, I think, of the, the human side of, of everything. Um, we want to start wrapping up this episode. Uh, if you would like to keep up with Orgy, you can find them on Facebook at Orgy Music. Uh, there's a bunch of numbers and all that stuff, but I swear to God, if you just type in Orgy Music on Facebook, you should find them. Uh, if you want to follow them on Instagram, it's Orgy the Band. Uh, it's Orgy underscore the underscore band. And Twitter is Orgy Official, or just go to orgymusic.com. Uh, if you'd like to keep up with Jay, uh, you can find him on Instagram at JG Music. Uh, I couldn't find him for Twitter, uh, so maybe he's there, maybe he's not. Uh, I didn't find it, and I didn't even find it previously when I had had him on and I had the show notes. See, people, show notes are important. I know a lot of people probably are like, oh, show notes, they're in the show notes. Who gives a fuck about show notes? And when I fill out everything, I am so glad I did because a lot of times I will, when I have previous guests back on, I'll just copy those show notes and paste them back in. Show notes matter, kids. Pay attention to them. Um, I spend the time on them. You should, too. All the information's there. Anyway, I uh, want to thank everyone for checking out this episode. Been getting a lot of feedback lately. Uh, just got a YouTube comment uh, on the Bob from a, a Life Once Lost episode. And he was like, man, I need to like hear like the chat picked up. Like the way it ended was just so like blue balls. Like you start talking about a life once lost and then his phone dies and I expected it to pick up and it doesn't. And I was like, no, you know, we talked about doing another episode and then just Bob kind of, you know, ended up not you know, responding to texts and stuff like that. And I'm sure life just happens and as it does to all of us. And eventually, uh, you know, I'll probably try to pick back up with Bob and maybe do a part two with him. But I almost kind of love the fact that that's just how it ended. Um, it ended kind of as, as oddly as it started. So uh, thanks to everyone for for reaching out and letting me know like which episodes you're digging and kind of going back through and, and kind of commenting on a lot of stuff. It, it means a lot. Uh, this is going to be year seven of the podcast. We're getting ready to hit 400 episodes, like a lot of time for reflection and nostalgia and all that kind of stuff. So definitely means a lot. If you want to drop me a line, you can hit me up at brutally speaking at gmail.com or you can find me on all the socials at Bruce speak pod. Um, Hit me up. Let me know. Talk about future guests, uh, music, sports, uh, whatever. I am pretty much an open book to a lot of things, and I'm very much uh, looking forward to hearing from more of you uh, as we approach the 400 episodes. What's your favorite episode and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you would like to keep up with our sponsors, uh, rockabilia.com, use our code brutally at checkout, take 10% off your total purchase order. Starving Artist Brewery, love those guys. Want to shout them both out because actually as I'm when I'm recording this, uh, I know I've made comments in several episodes that I'm going to the Botch Reunion show uh, if it weren't for my two podcast sponsors, they came through and basically with the, the money that I get for them sponsoring me, I was able to buy my flights and my hotel and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's, and honestly, like I actually texted Frankie from Rockabilia. Um, they ended up paying me at like the most opportune time. Cause when I was dealing with all this bullshit, I had the extra money to go and buy an interface and take care of the shit I needed to. So, Honestly, when I say like these podcast sponsors mean so much to me and they really support the show, I fucking mean they really support the show. Uh, I wouldn't be able to have fixed part of the problem that I've been dealing with, as you heard in the intro, without their support financially, you know, everything. Their support means so much and keeps the show going. So huge thanks to them. Go support them if you can. Um, I believe in everything that these guys are doing and they are just great fucking people behind the scenes as well. So thank you to all of them, all of you. And I will see you all next week where I have Tim Ripper Owens, formerly of Judas Priest, formerly of Iced Earth, formerly currently of a shitload of fucking bands. That was a really fun chat. I'm excited to get that one to you. I'll see you all next time. <laughs>